So then, as a parent, now that you know ADHD and you know that it's a more profound and a more impairing disorder than we once thought, what can you do? I want you to take three roles, and you can read about these in my book, Taking Charge of ADHD. The first role every parent should play is to become a scientific parent, which means make yourself an expert. I want you knowing as much as the professionals know. So you should be reading widely because truth is an assembled thing. It doesn't come from a single website or source. It comes from integrating across those and seeing the reliable information that keeps showing up across the various sources that you're reading. So whether you go to chad.org or add.org or caddock.org or the other websites, read, learn, become an expert, know as much as you can, just like a family of a diabetic child needs to know diabetes inside and out if they're going to appropriately cope with and compensate for that child's diabetes. And then, just like a scientist, you are going to have to experiment. There are hundreds of things that you can do, but they don't all work for every child. So we have to test, revise, test, revise. Try it. Does it work? If it doesn't, let's move on to something else. So there's a test, revise process about raising an ADHD child. You're not going to get it perfect out of the gate. And what worked for one parent may not work for your child. And somebody may be unconcerned, but your child's going to need Adderall or Vyvanse or Stratera. And the same dose that worked for one may not work for the other. It is a process of experimenting and letting your child show you which of these things may work for them. So be a experimenter. I tell that because parents come in and they try the token system and it didn't work and they try time out and you know, expecting that the first thing out of the gate is going to be successful and it isn't always so. You got to keep trying. And then I want you to become very skeptical. There is a lot of junk knowledge out there, especially on the internet. You type ADHD into Google, which I did this morning, 14 million replies. There is no way a parent can search that for the diamond in the dung heap. So <laughs> I want you to become very skeptical. If you are not hearing this information reliably across different sources, it probably isn't true. And if it sounds too good to be true, just like financial planning, it probably is. Right? <laughs> so be careful out there. There are magnetic mattresses, there's copper bracelets, there's ginkgo biloba, there's omega-3-6s, there's antioxidants like pycnogenol, there is so much junk out there. There's a clinic in Las Vegas that will diagnose your whole family and give you chips to spend at the casino. <laughs> you know, maybe that works, I don't know, right? So, but you get the point, all right? There is so much trash out there that it's hard to sort it out. So that's why you really need to have your skeptic hat on whenever you're reading anything and you're looking for reliable information across sources. And then you will filter out the gems. The next role, you need to become an executive parent. You need to stop whining, suck it up, man up, and own this disorder in this child. This is the hardest thing for families to do. They learn about it, they read it, but they don't necessarily own it. There is this sort of, if you will, reticence that they have internally that I see from time to time where they always hold out this hope that there's some silver bullet out there, usually on the internet, that if they just tried that, all the problems would be solved, we could give this up, he'd be normal, and let's get on with life. Right? And I wish there was the silver bullet, but there isn't. So we tell this to ADHD adults as well. It's one thing to know ADHD. It's another thing to own your ADHD and to make it a part of who you are. It's not all of who you are. You may be a gifted artist. You may be a comedian. You may be a scientist. You may be a physician. None of that has to do with ADHD. ADHD predisposes to no gift. But you do have other gifts and other talents at which you are good at. So I want you to embrace ADHD as part of who you are, but not all of who you are. ADHD is a small set of traits out of the more than 400 that you were blessed with. So you may be good at lots of other things. Let's find those other things because they're going to have to compensate for what your ADHD is dragging down. But don't ever attribute those other successful enterprises to your ADHD because it just ain't so. This is no gift but it doesn't mean you don't have other talents that we could use to compensate for it. Whether you're a good athlete, whether you're Michael Phelps, whether you're a good comedian, whether you're Ty Pennington on America's Extreme Home Makeover who loves to tear down houses since he was a kid and now he does it for a living, right? All of these are ADHD adults, right? 
But their giftedness is not due to their ADHD. It was something they found that they did well that could compensate for the problems that their ADHD had caused. So becoming an executive parent, like becoming an executive adult with ADHD, means part of it is I own the disorder. My child has this disorder because until you own it, you will not advocate for this child. And you have got to get out there and advocate and not let other people take charge of your child. That's why I called my book Taking Charge of ADHD. Because too many times I went to school conferences and I saw parents sit intimidated by the degrees sitting around the table and saying nothing about what was being said in that meeting. And I have to remind parents, these people work for you. You are the taxpayer. This is your child. You should be running this meeting. I want you coming in with a pad and a tape player, and I want you turning it on, and I want you saying to people, I'm not going to be able to take all the notes I want. I'm going to record this meeting. Now, let's talk about my son. Let's start with you. You're his homeroom teacher. What do you think? What's going on here? If you have to, run the damn meeting. And if somebody says something you don't understand, like your child's Woodcock Johnson psychoeducational IQ was, you were going to stop this meeting cold in its tracks. I don't know what you're talking about, all right? because you're going to see a lot of jargon tossed around by school professionals. Part of it's just showing off. So stop it, right? If you don't understand it, you advocate. And you can't advocate if you don't know what they're talking about. And then the final decisions are always yours, whatever the list of recommendations are, because sometimes the recommendations don't fit your child. This is just a list of recommendations that apply to ADHD plain vanilla. And you may not have plain vanilla. So you're going to have to look at those. You know your child better than anybody else, and you will pick and choose from those the ones you believe are most suitable to your family, to your child, to your values, and so on. But you run the meeting, and you don't sign off on anything that you are not comfortable with. I love parents who come in and give me grief. I do not like parents who come in and sit like a bunch of milk toast sitting in an office and just listening, 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 and not asking questions, and not advocating, and not telling me, I don't think that's going to work. His grandparents are not going to buy Concerta. They're going to take us to court for child abuse. You've got to help me with that. That's a true story, and that comes from my nephew. So consequently, families need to speak up. How do I know that your grandparents are resistant to medication, and that they will make your life miserable if you don't tell me? Okay, now I can tell you how to help the grandparents. But you see, if the parent doesn't talk up, I don't know. I can't help you cope with that. Rule number two, advocate. Number three, if you haven't read Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you better. In fact, the better book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families because we have found that more than any other families, families raising disabled children really need to learn and utilize these. Covey has at the back of the book a diagram that looks like an hourglass that has all seven principles built into these two upside-down triangles. Photocopy it and tape it to your bathroom mirror. When you are putting on your makeup or shaving in the morning, I want those seven habits in the corner of your visual field. That is your morning reminder to try to get it right. I do that, you should do that. And I didn't raise ADHD children, but these are very good principles for interpersonal relationships and especially if you have a disabled child. So if you're not familiar with it, these are the seven principles. You can read more about them.